People are encouraged to believe by rival newspapers, ho, 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 uh, that Brexit is somehow a uniquely British event down to uniquely British factors with a uniquely British story running under it. Clearly, that isn't true. It reflects economic, social and political tensions that are happening all across Europe. Paradoxically, Brexit is a deeply European story and the conversation tonight will reflect that. People from the north of England do not come to London for the theatre scene. And Bulgarians do not come to Britain or Greeks or Portuguese or Turks because of the weather. <laughs> they come because they must, because there is a capitalist crisis, there is a crisis of European capitalism which is creating the lowest level of investment in the history of the post-war era. Also, there is another anniversary I think it's important to say, which is coming this year, is the 100th anniversary of the October Revolution. Uh, and, well, I'm not a hardcore Bolshevik or something like that, but I think it's a very important uh, uh, revolution, which shows that also out of a crisis, out of a bloody war, there is also a possibility for something else. And I think also out of the crisis of the European Union, there is a possibility for something better. There's a beautiful expression by the Lebanese poet and, and thinker Khalid Gibran. He says in, in one of his books, he mentions how he learned silence from the talkative and how he learned kindness from the unkind and how he learned tolerance from the intolerant. I think that should be our motto at this moment in history. We have to learn the indispensability of democracy from populists. We have to learn the beauty of diversity from xenophobes. And we have to learn the urgency of international cooperation from the nationalists. So whatever they're saying, we're going to do exactly the opposite. It is a mistake to believe that there is an almighty political clash between the establishment and the populists. I think of them as accomplices. They need each other. Sure. Le Pen thrives on the failures of Brussels. Farage would not have existed without the inane handling of Europe's inevitable crisis. Lebanon has 40%, 40% of the population are refugees, which is 1.5 million, which is the population of the country where I come from, Croatia, or Denmark, for instance, they have a refugee problem. Europe, 1 million refugees, it's, it's nothing. Also, another thing what I would add, look at the jobs, what the immigrants do in London. They're actually doing the jobs normal or decent English people don't want to do. So in that sense, even if you just take the numbers, people shouldn't be scared about it. Why do we have uh, pressure on housing in English towns. It's not because of migrants. Migrants highlight it and therefore become the focal point of anxiety. The reason is because Mrs. Thatcher sold off the council houses. Information is not the same thing as knowledge. Knowledge is not the same as wisdom. We have a lot of information about anything and everything. That's why some scholars call it the pancake generation. Like when you're making a pancake, you know, it diffuses everywhere along the pan, but it's quite thin, isn't it? It doesn't go deep. It's not nuanced. But we have a little bit of information about everything. That doesn't mean we have the knowledge, and that doesn't mean we have the, the wisdom either, which is something else altogether and requires emotional intelligence. Trump gives us some hope, doesn't he? <laughs> Does he? Yes. You know what? That's an I mean, he's a despicable creature. There's nothing good about his election except that he proved that we leftists have been profoundly wrong all our lives when we have been hiding behind the idea that the establishment is too strong and we cannot defeat it. He ganged up on his own with a few idiots against the establishment and he won. If he can do it, we can do it. <laughs> 